It's true that more women tend to use it, but it's not only meant for women. Piss you you're my butler so how about you use some hand cream for grooming? Grooming. Piss you always thought that hand cream was used to make your hands beautiful, and never looked at it from the perspective of grooming. He looked at Celestina's hands, and then came next to her. I'll try some on. Celestina took some cream on her fingertips, and explained to him about the amount of cream needed for use each time. Spread about 3 centimeters of cream in your palm, and bring both your hand together to warm them up. If the cream isn't warmed up the effect isn't as good so, even if it's troublesome please, do warm it up. Yes. She applied some cream on his palm, and he brought his hand together, and rubbed them to warm up the cream as she had explained. He carefully spread the cream, and applied it all over his entire palm and fingertips. Please ensure that you apply it on the tips of your nails as well. Point hand cream is this troublesome. He smiled and said, that the women who groomed themselves were amazing. It might take some getting used. It's best to apply it, after washing your hands before bed. So that's how you apply it but of course it will be washed away, if you were to wash your hands. Pisu was convinced and nodded in agreement. Pisu's hands were pretty already, but it would be winter soon, so they would tend to become dry. It was best to make that a habit right now. Chloe watched Hisu and Celestina, and she couldn't hide her smile. She opened the lid to the second type. This one has a low cost, so even commoners can buy it. We've added refreshing herbs to it, since the amount of honey in it is low. It's not that you just made three different types, they each have a different target segment. Amazing Miss Clo. Celestina hadn't thought of anything other than getting a hand cream made, so it was really a good idea to leave it to a pro merchant. With this, not only aristocratic women like Celestina, but even commoners and men would be able to use it. The high price would be a pain point, but if you think that it could be used to prevent cracks in the skin then it was a reasonable buy. Hisu took the jar of hand cream infused with herbs, and brought it his nose. I certainly like this better, than the one with the sweet scent of honey. It's such a refreshing scent that really uplifts you. Celestina and Hisu took the cream in their hands enjoying its scent. The last one was the cheapest hand cream. This one has the least amount of honey. The oil used in its ingredient is also of a cheaper quality. Therefore, this doesn't have a scent. Let's try it on. Yes. Celestina and Hisu applied some on their hands. It didn't have the feeling of the other two creams. It was kind of sticky, and not as easy to apply. It would difficult to sell this to nobles even if the price was kept low. Backquote but, the commoners would probably be interested. Miss Clo, did you decide on its selling price? I asked Mr. Anson, but he isn't well versed in such things. We thought that the one that we plan to sell to the noble women can be priced at 50,000 luz. The one for the men can be priced at 30,000 luz and the one for the commoners can be 6,000 luz. It's a little expensive compared to the ones being sold in the market, currently right. Celestina was sure that that the hand cream that she was currently using was 30,000 luz for the same amount. There have been no hand creams for men before this so there is no way to compare to this. Backquote but it might be reasonable considering that we use the honey produced by flower bees however, branded ones could be more expensive. Right now they needed to decide on the price of a bottle of honey first. Clo looked anxious as she watched the thinking Celestina. Wah, what do you think? I was thinking that it might be better to decide on the price of honey first. The honey from flower bees is rare. So it might be a little more expensive right? Yes, that's right. The quality is much better than the one sold in the market. Chill showed them the document with the current market prices on it. She seemed to have quite a bit of research. 
the standard was 100 grams with the cheapest at 1000 luz, which could also be considered slightly expensive. Honey was considered a precious item in this world, so it was strange that Selin village was able to collect it so easily. The most expensive one was 30,000 luz which was pretty expensive. By the way, I have a sample of the honey. I bought this at the market. One bottle is 30,000 luz. The bottle of honey was placed on the table. It was a pale golden color and looked delicious. She definitely wanted to put some on pancakes and try it out. And this is the honey from Selin village. The honey from Selin village was a transparent golden. It looked incredibly golden. When they placed the two bottles side by side, it was clear that the honey from Selin village was wonderful and of far better quality. It was obvious at a glance. How much would this honey cost? We have it regularly at the village though. That's right Mr. Hisu. Honestly speaking the commoners could barely be able to purchase a spoonful point something like that. Close words were breathtaking. We at Pickard Company think that, even if we double the price from 30,000 lus, it's still cheap it's, is that what you think? Yes. Klo nodded at the shocked Hisu. Anyhow, it's such good quality points so how about we present it to the royal family first? That's what Mr. Nicholas was thinking. To the royals? The conversation was really becoming about something big. Fortunately, Lady Celestina is the fiancé care of the crown prince. This honey and hand cream can secure Lady Celestina's status. Miss Clo. Celestina was always known as the one without blessings till up till now. Not only did merchants like Clo know about it, but so did the commoners. Lady Celestina who had always been ridiculed till now is selling such an amazing thing. No matter which noble no, let's see what anyone can say now. Clo smirked and then smiled brightly. Unlike the enthusiastic Clo from earlier, she looked like an evil merchant. Backquote I must think about this a little more. Thank you for your kind words towards me, Miss Clo. Since I'm a new lord, there will also be lots of people that would start bootlicking. In that case, Selin Village's specialty will become its weapon. And then, let's create a brand centering around that honey. His Susan Clo's eyes flew open at Celestina's bold suggestion. They were shocked by the sudden proclamation. Celestina's face became hot due to embarrassment. However, Clo suddenly teared up and began to cry. That, that, that is, that is the best. Lady Celestina. Miss Clo? This time Celestina was the one shocked, since Clo suddenly teared up. I'm so, I'm so happy to be involved in the making of Lady Celestina's brand and its products. Thank you. I'm also reassured to have Miss Clo work with us. Celestina and Clo held each other's hands and began to talk. Hisu watched that and calmly told them to calm down. Making a brand is a good idea, but can it be created so easily? As long as you decide on a name, it can even be created immediately. Clo responded loudly to Hisu's question. Generally speaking it is difficult, but Lady Celestina is a lord of a territory. Since she has a good position, the procedure will be easy. Moreover, she has money. Besides Pickard Company may possibly lend a hand. I'm also a novice at these things, but if we need something, no even if we don't, Mr. Nicholas will surely get involved. There is nothing to be concerned about. The only thing to worry about is whether it will sell, but I believe that there is no way that it won't sell. It won't be too presumptuous to say that this is a promised victory. Ah, yes. Hisu took a step back from Klo who was speaking like a machine gun. So we can proceed once we decide on the brand name. Of course, we need to have Lady Celestina's permission, though. Fufu, -fu, your enthusiasm is amazing Miss Klo. Please do lend us a hand. Really? 
Thank you, this makes me the happiest. Chloe is frolicking around and Celestina smiles. Chloe was surely equal to the power of a 100 people, Celestina thought. Back quote but we must decide on the brand name. The bees that produce the honey are called back quote flower bees. The flowers from which the bees collect the nectar are the back quote flowers from the flower field next to the great tree. The skill is back quote sweet nectar. That is the one that gives the result. The one producing is back quote sell in village. Back quote it's probably impossible to pack all the words into one name. Since it's honey, should we call it honey? Even if we add the flower bees, it's difficult to add the name of Selin Village. I want to add a feeling of sweetness. But, it's probably better to keep it simpler, if we expect men to use it right. Who and Celestina and Clo held their heads. Nothing came to mind, while thinking of the name for the brand. Then how about we decide on the name for the hand cream first? Good idea Hisu. That's a good plan. Celestina and Chloe agreed immediately to Hisu's suggestion. Since it was a product, it would be easier to name it. It shouldn't be a problem if we add Lady Celestina's name to the brand. Please stop with that it's too embarrassing. Celestina looked far away remembering another instance before this where something similar had taken place. Why did they want to add the lord's name to the village? Or not? Hisu began to speak. Then how about backquote seller? I've heard that flowers are called fleurs in some land. It even has the backquote se from Lady Celestina's name. I think it's great. What do you think? Lady Celestina? No matter how you look at it, they wanted to incorporate Celestina's name. But Celestina herself felt that the name backquote seller had a nice ring to it. She nodded. It's a little embarrassing but it's a nice name point since it's honey. How about we call it backquote seller honey? This way they could associate it with honey as well. Hisu immediately agreed to Celestina's suggestion. We can probably add an image of the bees and honey. Yes. The image of the flower bee is very important. Looks like we came up with a nice brand name thanks to Hisu. Thank you. I'm glad to be of help to Lady Celestina. Hisu smiled happily, and Celestina happily returned the smile. They had now decided on the brand name. Next, they would request Pickard Company for help with various procedures and complete the products, and create the brand. They also needed to review the price. Miss Clo, this may be a big burden on you, but please consult me if there is anything that I can do. Really? I have something that I certainly want Lady Celestina to do. Of course, if it's something that I can do then I would like to. Celestina smiled cheerfully, and Clo returned her smile with a wide smile of her own. Backquota. Don't tell me that she'll ask me for something unbelievable. Celestina was slightly anxious, but she couldn't pull back anymore. Hisu watched over Celestina from behind thinking, oh dear. These days she had always been wearing her usual rose red one piece, so she was pretty nervous about wearing a proper dress after such a long time. Pale blue and baby pink accessories. They were all gifted by Sora Tech. As usual, he was really good at choosing stuff that suited Celestina well. Cell, is something the matter? Ah, no. It's just that I can't seem to calm down, since I'm attending an evening banquet after such a long time. Celestina was startled when Sora Tech suddenly called out to her. Celestina and Sora Tech were sitting in the carriage on the way to the banquet right now. She was a little worried. But she told herself that this wouldn't do, and adjusted her breathing in order to calm down. Sora Tech, who was sitting opposite Celestina, noticed it and came to sit beside her. Sal, it's incredibly rare for you to attend any banquet other than the ones held at the royal palace. It's only natural that you would feel nervous. 
saw a tech gently wrapped his arm around Celestina's shoulder. It's alright. I'll be there with you so there is nothing for you to worry about. Lord Soratek Selesina's shoulders gently relaxed. Although Soratek had come over beside Selesina to relieve her tension, this closeness was making her feel another kind of tension. Her heart was beating faster. Backquote we are never this close normally. With this kind of gesture from Soratek, Selesina thought that he was truly a capture target. Backquote but, I guess I'll let him spoil me for a little bit. Celestina leaned into Soratek's shoulder. She would normally never attend the banquet that was taking place today. The event that Celestina was about to participate in was an evening banquet held by the wife of the Earl, the Countess. Of course, she had a sound reason for wanting to participate in the banquet. When she asked for an escort, Soratek was really surprised. At the same time, he was incredibly happy for her, since she could now go out without any kind of hesitation. So. Yes. No, it's just that I'm surprised that you're letting me spoil you right now. It makes me really happy. He thought that it might make her uncomfortable, but that wasn't the case at all. Sora Tech's eyes only reflected his happiness and love for Celestina. It made Celestina pretty embarrassed and shy though. Backquote ah, that's right. Actually, I have something that I would like you to see Lord Soratek. Me. Celestina brought out a glass jar from her bag and opened the lid. It was a jar of hand cream. I would like you to smell it. How is it? Soratek slowly brought the jar to his nose. A soft and refreshing scent filled his nostrils. This was one of the hand creams produced in Selen Village. It's a wonderful scent. What is it? It's hand cream. Ah, the ones that women use. I thought that they always have a sweet scent. So there are even scents like these available these days. Soratek had liked it. Celestina was relieved. Since this meant that there was a possibility other men may also like it and use it. Point would you like to try some on? Is that fine? Of course. I tell you the details later but this is the hand cream made in Selen Village. Celestina smiled happily. Celestina had come up with the idea and then they had manufactured it. At first, she was aiming for a simple hand cream. But now it seemed to have transformed into a big project. The brand that they were launching was called Cellar Honey. It was the brand named after the flower bees that collected the nectar in Selen Village. They would not only sell the honey itself, but also hand cream. The one meant for noble women was sweet nectar. The hand cream was made with plenty of honey. Its feel and moisturizing effect were like no other. The people of Selin Village and Rinklet household had used it, and they could only rave about it. The hand cream aimed at men was, refreshing nectar, the amount honey used, had been adjusted to suppress the sweet scent peculiar to honey. Instead, they had added in refreshing herbs to give it a clean, and refreshing scent that men like. The third one was the affordable, gorgeous nectar, a commoner can buy it as well, if they really wish to. It was made with that concept. The amount of honey in it was small and the oil used in it was also of a cheaper quality. However, the distribution was adjusted many times to make it very effective. The men from Selen Village tried it on and their hands are no longer dry. Well, it's the brand that you recently launched right Lady Celestina? I heard from a company that I'm well acquainted with that you're going to be releasing an amazing hand cream. I heard that as well. Maybe you're already wearing the hand cream today. That's what I was thinking Lady Celestina. Thank you. I didn't expect you to have already heard of it. It makes me very happy. My brand is called Cellar Honey and we're in the midst of preparing for its launch. After exchanging greetings at the banquet, it would turn into Celestina's battlefield. Celestina was enjoying her conversation with the organizer of today's banquet, 
the countess, and her daughter. The other women were watching Celestina from some distance away. She was wearing a smile on her face like a mask, and promoting the hand cream that would be sold by Miss Clo and the others of Pickard Company. When Celestina told Clo to let her know if there was something that she could help with, and she would cooperate, she was immediately appointed as the one in charge of advertising in the social circles. Back quote well, considering my position, there was no other candidate better than me. It would have difficulty if she was despised as someone with no blessings, but Soratek had already announced that she possessed the blessings of a goddess. Celestina's status in the social circles had transformed drastically. It wasn't like it had been long since she attended this kind of banquet. The truth was that she had never attended one like this. It was her first time. Celestina brought her palm to her nose and inhaled deeply to enjoy the scent in response to the question asked earlier. The one I'm wearing is the hand cream that is made for noble women. Sweet nectar. Its characteristic is the sweet scent of honey. She smiled cheerfully, and the girl that had asked the question looked at Celestina with sparkling eyes. I also want to try out the hand cream you use Lady Celestina. I'm sure that it will have a great scent. Actually, I've brought some with me. OHH. She was surprised to see that the young lady responded as per her expectations. Celestina would have never expected a day to come where she, who was called as the one without any blessings, would be in a position to create fashion in the social circles of nobility. Soratek felt a little strange as he watched Celestina who had now become the center of the conversation. Till now she was always called back quote the one without blessings. So she never took the initiative to attend any banquets. Soratek was feeling just a little lonely. Is it alright to leave Lady Celestina on her own? Point Wilfred. She seems to be enjoying a conversation with the ladies at the moment. Soratek was looking ahead at Celestina who had a prototype of the hand cream in her hand, and was talking to other women. Wilfred understood and looked at Soratek. Are you jealous? F you you, what are you saying Will? Soratek took a sip of the drink negating Wilfred's words. Soratek glared at Wilfred, and told him, that that wasn't the case. In the first place, there are no men present there. There was no reason to feel jealous. Soratek once again denied Wilfred's words. Wilfred laughed in response. Jealousy doesn't have to be limited to the opposite sex. Lady Celestina was always by your side before this, so it wouldn't be surprising if you were lonely. Lonely if you put it like that then I cannot deny it. Soratek admitted to his feelings obediently and raised his hand in surrender. By the way, what exactly are those women talking about? A-H-H, it's about this hand cream. Hand cream? Soratek explained to Wilfred, who seemed deeply interested, what he had heard from Celestina. She would soon be launching a new brand soon so had brought along a few samples and they were talking about that. I see, I see. So she took the initiative to come to a social gathering for that reason. Certainly, the best way to start a fashion was to come to an evening banquet or a tea party. Wilfred always thought of Celestina as a timid lady, so he was never interested her but his opinion of her had changed after seeing her shoot the monster on the way to the great shrine, and after hearing about today's case, he realized that he had painted a very misguided figure of her. That's a pretty good fianche. I don't what you've been thinking, but Cell is strong. Even though she was stamped as someone with no blessings. She has been my fianke for the past 10 years. Wilfred gasped at Soratek's words. That's right, I guess I have been pretty stupid. Fun. It's fine as long as I understand Cell. Her allies will continue to grow hereafter. Soratek was a little concerned, 
that a weird bug would attach themselves to Celestina. Even right now there were some people who were watching her from afar. Soratek always thought that he wanted to marry her quickly. Wilfred smiled dryly as he watched Soratek who looked as if he had swallowed a bitter pill. His master's head was full of his fianke and his love for her. In that case, wouldn't it be good to show the people around that your lady Celestina's best a lie? What? You've got that hand cream with you so isn't there some way to use it? I'm sure that Lady Celestina will be really pleased. Wilfred pointed at the hand cream in Sora Tech's hand. Celestina had participated in this evening banquet in order to promote her hand cream, so it would be good if Sora Tech could also promote it amongst his acquaintances. How about it? How about you start with me? With you? Yes. Since Lady Celestina has made it, I'm pretty interested. Wilfred removed his gloves showed his hands to Soratek. His hands were neat and clean. Beautiful hands. Point your hands are beautiful I'm sure the women would be envious of it. I'm honored to receive your praise. Wilfred smiled cheerfully, and Soratek resigned to himself, and handed him the hand cream. He had to help her out with promoting it, but since it was a present from Celeste in a point he didn't really want to share it with others. Well, he would surely be told that he was being jealous again though. Wilfred took an appropriate amount with his fingers and applied it on his hands. The women around squealed. There seemed to be a lot of young women aiming to catch a K for themselves. However, Wilfred didn't notice that at all, and carefully applied the cream on his hands. This is a nice scent. Much more so than I expected. There are many hand creams available with sweet scents, but this one is targeted towards men that's the reason for this kind of scent. It seems to be easy to apply as well. Yes, it is. It's easy to apply, and it's not sticky. It doesn't matter, even if I put on my gloves immediately after. Wilfred nodded and said that once this is launched, he would need to purchase it immediately. He seemed to have really taken a liking to it. Soratek was relieved to know that it was liked by a man other than him. I'll let Cell know that you liked it. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the brand's launch. I'll recommend it to others as well. Since Wilfred was generally well-groomed Soratek thought that the men that he recommends it to may also be those that take care of their appearance. He also thought that it might be a good idea to recommend it to his other aides as well. The one that came to his mind was the completely unrelated Olgren. How about Olgren? What are you saying Lord Soratek? There is no way. That Algren would use something like a hand cream. That's what I had thought as well Soratek thought about Algren who wasn't present here at this banquet. Shrugged his shoulders and nodded. Celestina was staying at the mansion in the royal capital for the time being. And actively participating in evening banquets. In order to promote Cellar Honey. Thanks to that. Cellar Honey had already established a good reputation even before its launch. However, in comparison, Celestina was completely drained out. Thank you for your hard work Lady Cell. Hisu, thank you. Hisu prepared some tea and madeleines for Celestina who was resting on the sofa. Warmth permeated through her tired body. Today was the final evening banquet that you were going to participate in right. We had planned to go to Selin village tomorrow, but... Would you like to rest here for a little bit? No, let's go to Selin village. I'm curious to know how the guards are doing, whether they are used to the village, yet and I have to talk to Miss Klo about the hand cream. Understood. I'll make the preparations. Thank you. Seeing Hisu off, Celestina realized that he had come to have a very good command over his work even without any formal graduation. No one would ever be able to imagine that he was an orphan living in a small hut prior to this. No one would believe it 
Even if Selesina were to tell them. Yosh. Hisu is doing his best for me, so I must do my best as well. However, what Selesina had to do right now was to rest properly, and prepare for tomorrow's schedule. If she were to fall sick, it would only increase Hisu's work. I have to increase my physical stamina. Selesina went to the bathroom, in order to prepare before bed. Lady Selesina, Mr. Hisu, I've been waiting for you. Selesina had gone to the village the following day in her carriage, as usual, to find that Clo was waiting for them at the entrance to the village, and waving at them. Why are you at the entrance of the village? When Hisu, who was acting as the coachman asked Clo what she was doing there, she proudly replied, as if it was only natural. There are enough people in the shop today, so I've come to welcome Lady Selesina. I wanted to quickly have a discussion about Cellar Honey with her, and I couldn't wait. Right now we are having a storm of inquiries from various places. If this is the case before launch then just imagine what would happen once we launch it please calm down Miss Clo. She would talk endlessly, if they just left her like this. Hisu somehow managed to calm Clo down, and park the carriage. He opened the door to the carriage after, and helped Celeste in her alight. With this, his work with the carriage, was over for now. Good morning Miss Clo. I'm looking forward to our discussion. Lady Celesina, good morning. They exchanged greetings immediately headed to the branch of Pickard Company, to have their discussion boot before that. Celesina glanced over the village, and found that the guard station at the entrance FO the village was complete. It was the biggest building in the village with two floors. She looked carefully to find that there was a big entrance near the entrance to the village and two guards were standing there. Backquote amazing. They finished it quite well. Clo began to explain once she noticed Celestina watching the guard station. It was completed 5 days ago. The first floor is the workplace and the second floor is the rest space and nap room. Is that so? I was surprised that they constructed it so fast. Had it been a simple house it would have been fine, but the station had to be constructed with some amount of care. After all, it was two stories. It must have been quite a task. The men did their best. Right now they are constructing the homes for the guards. After that is done, they will make the barn. It's going pretty well. Yes. Ah, they're also making a well right now. As expected, a well isn't that easy to construct, so it hasn't been completed yet. Clo pointed to one side of the village square. The men were in the midst of constructing it, they were digging a deep hole at the moment. Back quote you are, that looks difficult. But it was a great help, that they would finally have a well in the village, she really wanted them to give it their best. It's changed a lot, even though I've only been away for a short while. Selen village is still a small village, so it will change more and more hereafter. The next thing we need, is an inn here. Selesina nodded at Clo's words and suddenly realized. The men constructing the well, where are they staying? She was anxious, that they may be living in tents just like the guards. As a contractor, she couldn't let that happen. They've divided themselves between Mr. Anton's house and the nap room and the guard station. There aren't too many of them, so it has worked out. Is that so? Thank God. Celestina was relieved to know, that they weren't camping out. And at the same time she was grateful to Anton for various things. She was reassured to know that he looked over the village so well. Back quote there are so many things to do, it's too much. She looked to the village square to find that some of the tents that the guards had put up had reduced. Looks like some of them had got their houses made. She then looked behind towards the potato fields. The young man from the village, Rio, was giving some instructions, and was in the middle of harvesting the fields with the children. They regularly used potatoes, 
to make potato chips and sell it at a stall in Hamel, but it was considered a great success even now. Back quote today's a good harvest too. The bud on the great tree hasn't bloomed yet but it seems to have grown a little bit, so there's no problem there. Shall we go to the store? Sorry, I took my time looking at various things. No, it's reassuring to see a lady Celestina looking around the village. See, everyone looks so happy. Close said, the children were waving excitedly from the potato field towards Celestina. Lady Celestina. Jissel was also amongst them, and she looked super energetic. Since she was blessed by the spirit of the earth, she was full of enthusiasm. Celestina waved back at them, and cheered them on. Please do your best. We are back. Welcome back. Celestina and Hissu went together with Clo to the shop to find that Nicholas was waiting there. He was going to be a part of today's meeting. I was waiting for you Lady Celestina. The promotions at the social gathering seems to have gone very well. I'm looking forward to what will happen from now on. Thank you, Mr. Nicholas. Let's go to the business meeting room. Nicholas guided her into the meeting room. Celestina and Hisu sat next to each other, and Chloe and Nicholas sat opposite them. Another employee served some tea, and in the meantime, Clo got the products. Nicholas began to speak, getting straight to the main topic. It's about the day that we launch Cellar Honey. We've already put it down in writing, but we are planning to launch it on the 25th of the month of winter. Yes, that would be good. Celestina thought that Nicholas was really skilled as realized that everything was progressing smoothly. From the time the prototype of the hand cream was made till the date of its launch, it would take about one month. Since it was a new brand, it would be many times more difficult than just launching a regular new product. Right now it was the 36th day of the month of wind. The month of winter was the next one. Back quote the time will pass in the blink of an eye. The barn would surely be completed by next month, so the village would certainly become more lively, and along with the launch of the brand, the people coming to the village will increase. They also had to finalize the price of the products. The price of the hand cream would remain the same as the original, but the price of honey was still under consideration. Moreover, this was going to be presented to the king, before it was sold to the public. For that reason, the earliest that they could plan to sell it was the month after next. It would be sold in the main store of Pickett Company in the town of Harmel, and in the branch store at Selin Village. The main store at Harmel would sell all the three types of hand cream, but the branch store at Selin Village would only sell back quote gorgeous nectar that was aimed at commoners. The ones aimed at aristocrats. Backquote sweet nectar and backquote refreshing nectar may possibly even be sold to foreigners. The price of honey hasn't been finalized yet but we were discussing with Mr. Anton to buy 100 grams for 70,000 loss from the village. We assume that you have also been informed of this right Lady Celestina? Yes. I was informed about it. There is no problem with that. Thank you. The distribution would not have a problem. The only concern was that it could go out of stock due to being too popular. But a hand cream is not something that gets over very quickly, so that issue would be solved in a little bit. Next, they needed to finalize the brand logo. They had brushed up on it several times already. Celestina picked up the design. It's wonderful. You could tell that it was beautiful with just a glance. The logo of Cellar Honey had a motif of the flower bees and flowers enclosed beautifully in a circle with a sophisticated typeface. For the hand creams, backquote sweet nectar had a lovely flower motif. Backquote refreshing nectar had a motif of flower bees and herbs. Backquote gorgeous nectar that was directed at the commoners had a motif of the great tree. If you feel that something is amiss, we can still fix it today. 
What do you think Lady Celestina? No, I think we can go ahead with this. It seems like the finish will be wonderful, I'm looking forward to it. Nicholas nodded in satisfaction at Celestina's words. It seems that he had liked the designs quite a bit as well. Finally, they had to decide on the containers. Claire arranged several samples on the table. The container that would hold the cream that was aimed at aristocratic women was a glass jar decorated with flowers near its handle. Several small jewels encrusted the body of the jar all around. There were other containers as well, such as the ones with pictures painted on them for example, pictures of small animals but none of them stood out. The one aimed at men had a simple design. It was a glass jar with a double line design. It wouldn't be weird if an adult male were to hold it. The last container was the one aimed at the commoners. It was a simple container made with hollowed out wood. It was made as cost effective as possible. Backquote I'm amazed that they could make it simple like this. But she understood that they were doing their best for the commoners. Instead of having a beautiful yet expensive container, it was better to have a cheaper one. If they were to use it regularly, they wouldn't get habituated to it, if it was made too expensive. Nicholas checked the containers that Celestina had chosen and filled the purchase order. With this, everything that they needed to decide on in order to make the hand cream was complete. Then we'll produce this. Thank you. Nicholas carefully put away the documents and started to speak once more. You should open a store exclusive to sell a honey as well. A. Exclusive. Store? Celestina was shocked at the unexpected words. The brand hadn't even been launched, yet so she wasn't thinking of opening her store or anything. But Nicholas had a cool face. It's not uncommon for a noble with status to open an exclusive store simultaneously. The pattern that you're following is rarer Lady Celestina. Celestina started to think of how the nobles usually conducted business. She remembered a very proud lady that she had met once at an evening party that she attended with Sora take a lin time back. What was the lady proud about? Backquote I think she was very proud of the fact that she bought a store. Ah, so that's how it is. Nobles usually open their own stores and they don't often engage in a consortium like Celestina had chosen to do. Of course, there were some nobles that chose to go with that approach, but that was if they were low ranking or had no financial leeway. For a noble like Celestina, with status and money, they would just establish their own company. Their method had its own merits she thought. Backquote but, my hands are full. Not completely but I cannot possibly open my own store. The higher the status of the noble, the more likely they are to open their own store however, I trust Pickard Company, so I want to promote this business together with you. Lady Celestina hearing Celestina's words, both Nicholas's and Chloe's eyes became moist. They seem to have been deeply moved. As I thought, Lady Celestina is a revolutionary person. I think you will change this country starting with Selin Village Nicholas said. I'll follow you for the rest of my life Lady Celestina. Said Clo. Ple, please calm down both of you. Celestina quickly shook her head seeing them almost praying to her. I just was Selin Village point my territory to do well and prosper. I'm not such a great person that humility is. Nicholas and Chloe said the same thing, and denied her words. Point the goddess is unaware of her greatness. Ah, that's Lady Celestina's personality. As expected, you understand her well Mr. Nicholas. No matter what she said now, they wouldn't listen to her. Celestina smiled. Backquote I'm doing all of this, in order to survive though. As a result, she was happy that everyone in the village was happy. But if too much was expected out of her, it would make her anxious if she cannot meet those expectations.
she didn't know how much time she had before her engagement was broken, but right now she would live to the fullest, in order to respond to everyone's expectations. The preparations of the launch for Seller Honey was progressing smoothly and soon it was the day of the launch of Seller Honey, the 15th of the month of winter. Nicholas was at the main shop of Pickard Company in the town of Harmel and Celestina was going to be at the branch store at Selin Village for the launch. Since Celestina had no knowledge of sales etc, everything would mostly be handled by Clo. She left her mansion in Harmel early as usual, but the things outside were pretty different compared to usual. She peeked out of the window of her carriage, and looked around at the surroundings. Usually there are only a few carriages on the road so what's up with this traffic jam today, woof, it was a traffic jam like the ones in her previous world. Toy seemed to find this spectacle weird as well, and he was peeking out of the window with Celestina. Lady Cell, these carriages seem to be heading to Selin Village. Eh, really? This direction only has Selin Village. Moreover. Today is the launch day of the hand cream right. This kind of crowd is expected isn't it? Celestina blinks her eyes several times. Hisu seemed like he had predicted as much. Celestina was also probably busier than usual right? If there were many customers, she would be pleased. It was just a feeling though. I think I would be making a very sweet assumption. That's right. Hisu. Celestina misunderstood him, when he affirmed her statement. Was she really so self-delusional in believing, that they were all here for her hand cream? But Hisu shook his head no, and told his kindly, that she had misunderstood. Lady Cell, you have a very poor opinion of yourself. A. I think it would be better, if you were more self-confident. After all, I'm also one of those people that think very highly of you Lady Cell. Hisu smiled happily. Celeste in a breath caught in throat seeing that kind of an expression unexpectedly. He smiled quite often, but it wasn't so often, that he smiled from the bottom of his heart like this. Backquote Hisu seems to trust me. She was often sloppy, busy and tired. That's the kind of appearance she always seemed to show him, so she thought that he may have become disillusioned, but as per what happened just now, she realized that that wasn't the case. Her opinion of herself was poor, just as it was pointed out to her. Since she knew that she was the villainous, that's why she always maintained that about herself however, hereafter she would have to improve the opinion of herself in order to respond to the people. Celestina finally arrived at Selin village a few hours later than usual to find that there were several carriages parked in front of the village. Though Celestina was fascinated by the sight in front of her, right now she was aiming to quickly reach the store. Even though she had left so early, due to the traffic jam she didn't make it time for the launch. Hisu, Toy, let's hurry. Yes, woof. The people were lined up inside the village, in order to visit the store, they looked like a guiding line. Backquote we don't have enough hand creams for all these people. Even if we had predicted these many people, we couldn't have produced that many hand creams. It was unfortunate, but Celestina resigned to herself that till things calmed down, they would keep running out of stock. They somehow managed to slip through the crowd and reach the store, but they couldn't enter the store due to the crowd. This is difficult. We cannot possibly enter. Yes. One male employee was managing the people lined up in front of the store. Most likely, Clo and another employee were in charge of the shop and the sales. Celestina and Hisu were wondering what to do, when a voice called out to her. Excuse me, please let me through, UHH. Lady Celestina. Adette. The one that was in charge of serving Celestina during her time in the village, Adette, slipped through the crowd, and came to the front. She was wearing an apron, and was most likely in the midst of some work. 
Lady Celestina, actually, Miss Chloe did say that your arrival today might be significantly delayed due to the congestion today. That's why she asked me to pass on a message to you. Is that so? Thank you. We've been concerned since we can't go to Miss Chloe due to the crowd. Celestina dropped her shoulders and Adet agreed. We were also surprised at the number of people here. Grandpa Anton was so happy that he cried. Mr. Anton I understand that feeling very well. I'm really happy that so many people are visiting the village. From now on the aim was to have people visit the village regularly. Ah, what should we do then? Miss Chloe asked me to pass on the message. She said that the shop is fine so please look around the village. Should we go to the village square first? Celestina nodded at Chloe's words. Celestina headed to the great tree. There is enough stuff so please don't push and line up two packets of potato chips right. Thank you. Someone bring some more potato chips. When they reached the end of the village square, there was a large crowd gathered there as well. All the villagers were at the potato chip stall. They regularly held a stall in the town of Harmel. That's why there were people who knew about the potato chips and bought them. And there were people that didn't know about it, but bought them as well. After seeing the reaction of the people that bought it and ate it, the same pattern repeated itself again and again. The potato chips from Selin Village are delicious. Anton was enthusiastically calling out. You were helping out at the stall right Adet? Yes. All of us are helping out at the stall other gats and some others who are helping with the construction. Adet's job was to serve Celestina that's why she had come to her, she said. I've been selling potato chips from the morning so I'm exhausted. The children are still full of energy I'm almost jealous. Adet said as she took off her apron. The children are always brimming with energy. Adet, do you have some time right now? Yes. I'm in charge of serving you so taking care of you is more of a priority than the village. UUM, that's right. However, please do let me know if you're too busy. If the village really needs help then Celestina would prefer it, if Adet chose to prioritize the village over taking care of her. Celestina had enough money to solve most things. Thank you for your concern Lady Celestina. Do you want to go somewhere? Adet asked Celestina about the intended destination, since Celestina had just asked about whether Adet was free, if in case she wished to go to the royal capital. Then Adet would need to bring a change of clothes as well. However, this time Celestina didn't need her for herself. Actually, I have a present for you and Hisu. For me? A. For me too? Celestina nodded cheerfully and handed over one gift wrapped box to each one of them. Hisu's box had a green ribbon and Adet's box was tied with a pale blue ribbon. After Hisu received it, Adet nervously received it as well. Thank you point, but why present? Thank you Lady Celestina. Both of them expressed their gratitude and Hisu immediately unraveled the ribbon. He was very interested to know what present Celestina had gifted him. Once he opened the box, he found a simple glass jar full of hand cream. The jar with back quote refreshing nectar. This, isn't this the one, that is released today. Hisu looked at the present and Adet was shocked to see the present. Why? Because she knew the price of the hand cream. It wasn't something, that one couldn't buy, but since it was aimed at aristocratic women and men, it too expensive to afford for the commoners. Adet nervously opened up her ribbon, and opened the gift box. The gift for her was back quote sweet nectar the one, that the young women were actively anticipating to buy today, the hand cream from Cellar Honey. You are a point this kind of an expensive gift for me. She didn't know what to do, and her hand trembled as she held onto the box. Didn't we have a discussion earlier? I was touched that you praised my hands, Adet. 
I'll point the conversation from that time, you remembered it? She thought that it was surely a boring conversation for Celestina. But not only did she remember it, but she had also even given her such an expensive hand cream. This was a treasure point no it would become an heirloom, thought Odette. She held on to the jar preciously. Thank you Lady Celestina. I'll cherish it. Adet smiled with joy at Celestina and showed her the cream. Back quote I'm glad that she is happy. It would get busier and busier from now on. There were too many things to do. Back quote let us help out at the potato chips stall as well. Celestina said and quickly ran ahead with Isu hurriedly following after her. Lady Cell, please don't go ahead alone. Please wait, both of you. Sounds of happiness could be heard in Cell and Village today as well. The fun of that day was over before she knew it, and now Celestina was on her to the mansion at the royal capital. She wanted to inform Bethel about today, and gift a hand cream to Anna. However, the route to the royal capital was quite congested with traffic. It was pretty late in the night by the time they reached the royal capital. As Celestina, Hisu and Toy entered the mansion, a voice welcomed them in. Welcome back. Sora Tech and Bethel were waiting at the entrance. We, we are back. Lord Sora Tech, father, it's so late already, have you been waiting for me? It's only natural, since it's my fiancé's special day today. Congratulations on the success of your brand launch cell. Sora Tech handed over a huge bouquet of roses to Celestina. Thank you Lord Sora Tech. The roses are beautiful. What a lovely scent. Celestina accepted the roses and expressed her gratitude cheerfully. Bethel came over to her and lovingly hugged her. Congratulations. As expected of my daughter, you're great. Laura had already fallen asleep. She was pretty disappointed to not be able to meet you sell so do go and meet her tomorrow. Thank you, father. I must thank mother as well. I would like to have some tea with her before leaving tomorrow. Yeah, that would be good. Laura was Celestina's mother. She would usually be at home in the mansion doing her thing and relaxing, but recently due to the upcoming launch of Celestina's brand, she had been receiving several queries from her associates, which she had been busy responding to. Back quote to think I even ended up troubling mother. She had prepared a hand cream for Laura as well, and she would hand it over to her tomorrow. Of course, she had prepared hand cream for Sora Tech and Bethel as well. Let's not stand here and talk. Shall we change location? Ah, yeah. Your Highness Sora Tech. This way please. Hanley, please prepare the tea. Certainly. While Bethel was handing out instructions, Toy let out a rumbling sound at Celestina's feet. He was lying on the floor near her feet with a very sleepy face. Today it became too late by the time we returned Yosh, you're sleepy aren't you Toy? When Celestina began to stroke Toy, he immediately started to lick her cheeks. He was adorable. Hisu. You can go in now so can you please put Toy to sleep? Understood. Today's travel was very long, so it was easy for him to get tired out. That's right riding a carriage for so many hours was sure to increase his stress as well. Then please excuse me. Toy, let's go. Woof. After Hisu and Toy left, the three of them went to the drawing room. I was surprised to see such a traffic jam. Even if this is the royal capital, we don't see that kind of traffic usually. Yes, that's true. Bethel was talking about what he saw today happily, and Soratek was also agreeing with him joyfully. While they were talking excitedly, Celestina prepared her gift. Soratek noticed Celestina sneaking around, and asked her what happened. Actually, I've prepared a present for the both of you. Here. To receive a present from my daughter thank you. For me too. Thank you, Cell. 
the two of them accepted it happily and opened it. Soratek immediately realized what it was. This is the hand cream that was launched today right? The hand cream that caused the traffic jam. Let me apply some immediately. Bethel was in a very good mood as he opened it and applied it. Oh h it's very smooth. It moisturizes well after applying, a great product. I'll use it preciously. Yes. Please do let me know once it's over, I'll give you some more. I'm so happy to hear that. I would be happy to receive anything from you as a present sell. Bethel said. Celestina smiled at Bethel's words saying that it was too much. Bethel truly adored and loved his daughter very much. Sora Tech, who was sitting next to Celestina, also tried on some hand cream. He smiled happily while enjoying the fragrance of the refreshing nectar. Celestina was relieved to know that he was happy with the present. Backquote come to think of it, Lord Soratek always gives me roses and gives me dresses for the evening banquets. Moreover, she had relied on him often even with regards to the thing about her blessings, but she hadn't really given him much in return. Backquote I must express my gratitude and appreciation to Lord Soratek more and more from here on. Thank you, Cell. I'll use it every day. Yes. I'm glad you like it. Celestina smiled and replied to Soratek. From here on, the products directed at men would most probably increase. There was a knock on the door. Hanley came in with a cart of light food and tea. When Celestina saw the delicious looking sandwich, she realized that she was hungry, since she hadn't eaten anything since she got onto the carriage. Before Hanley took out the tea set, he went to Bethel and handed him a sealed envelope. A letter. I thought that I will give the letter to you tomorrow, since it arrived so late in the night the sender wash is waiting. Ah, thank you. Celestina realized that it seems to be an urgent message from the exchange. Since Bethel was sitting opposite her, she couldn't see the name of the sender. Soratek seemed to understand the urgency, so he urged Bethel to open the letter. Thank you for your consideration, your highness. I wonder what it says. The moment he read the name of the sender, Bethel's facial expression became stronger. Celestina really wanted to know the sender that could make her father have such an expression. Backquote is it some bad news? It would be good if that wasn't the case, but the expression was concerning. Backquote father doesn't make such an expression, even when he receives a letter from the king himself. Bethel used a paper knife to open the envelope and removed the letter. What came out was a single sheet letter in beautiful white. Celestina was fascinated by it for a moment. You don't see that kind of a beautiful white often. Bethel read the letter over, and his eyes seemed to be clearly disturbed and upset. Celestina was wondering if it was okay for her to ask, but she couldn't leave him as he was now, so she decided to ask him. Father, what does the letter say? Is it some kind of bad news? Bad news? Well, you can take it however but it's difficult. I can say that it's not a good situation though. Celestina inclined her head and looked at Bethel who had just given a very confusing response. She became anxious and looked at Soratek to find that he had a rugged expression on as well. Backquote ah, did Lord Soratek guess the contents of the letter? In that case, Celestina was the only one who didn't know. She didn't feel so good being the only one left out of the loop. However, since both Bethel and Soratek seemed to understand, there was a possibility that it was about a matter that was important to the country. Maybe it wouldn't be good for Celestina to ask too much. Is a letter related to me in any way? Soratek asked. Backquote Lord Soratek. Without changing his expression, Soratek asked in a serious tone. 
Then drop silence surrounded the room for a few moments. Bethel slowly began to speak. Point yes. The chief of the great shrine, Lucaria Asgaral has expressed his wish to be Celestina's fiancé. Celestina couldn't believe her ears when she heard her father let out the truth in a strained voice. M, my fiancé. At the shockingly unexpected words from her father due to the contents of the letter, Celestina couldn't bring herself to say anything else. To the north of the royal capital of the Kingdom of Albert was the Rinklet Territory. Within the Rinklet Territory, there was a district named the Second District, that housed a small village. The name of that village is Backquote Selin Village, and it is mainly managed by the daughter of the owner of the territory, the Marquis Rinklet. She is the lord of that territory. It's a very peaceful village full of smiles, a good village. In the village of Selin, the mansion of the lord of the village was almost nearing its completion right about now, although it was too small to be called the mansion of the lord. The mansion was two floors high and a lot of natural light flooded into the mansion by the way of skylights. The appearance from the outside was simple and the entrance of the mansion was lined with flowering plants on its sides with white flowers growing on them. It looked lovely. Celestina looked at the mansion that was soon going to be complete with tremendous excitement. Her heart was racing. Hisu isn't this a great mansion? The one pointing at the mansion in great excitement was Celestina Rinklet. She had silvery white long hair and lovely rose pink eyes. She had a kind yet happy smile on her face, happy about the fact that her mansion was soon to be finished constructing. Right now Celestina was full of enthusiasm and energy, but till some time back she was always known as the one with no blessings. In this world, each person receives blessings from either the spirits, gods, or goddesses. This was the case for each person with an exception, or at least that's how it's supposed to be. The backquote seal of blessings that was the sign that appeared on a person's body once they had received blessings hadn't appeared anywhere on Celestina's body. For that reason, she was always called backquote the one with no blessings. In order to not bring trouble to her parents, Celestina rarely left her house all these years. However, recently she had been to the Great Shrine and the chief of the Great Shrine Lucaria had informed her that she was indeed blessed, and that she was blessed by a goddess. Therefore she was living her days peacefully at the moment. Well, it wasn't like she was entirely free of thoughts or concerns. For example, the fact that she was the villainous or that, even though she was the FMK of the crown prince of this country, the chief of the great shrine had requested to become her FMK. Or that the event, where she is dumped as the FMK of the crown prince Soratek hadn't occurred yet. Celestina softly sighed in her heart. About Lucaria's wish to become her FMK, it wasn't something that she could deal with on her own at this point in time. So she would leave it to her father, Bethel. Ah, they are giving it the finishing touches. Lady Cell. That's great, woof. Hisu was looking up at the mansion, that was near completion with joy. With amber colored hair and jade green eyes, Hisu was her apprentice butler. He was pretty short until recently, but he had grown taller now. His butler clothing, was sweeting him much better now too. As he was Celestina's butler, he was here with her at the village. And with them was also Hisu's friend the divine beast, Toy. Toy had pure white fur and was soft, super soft that you just felt like hugging him. The ribbon around his neck looked fashionable, and gave him a dignified appearance. The people constructing Celestina's mansion were Gats as the head and some other villagers. She was told earlier that the mansion would be complete very soon after a little more work on the interior. That's why Celestina, Hisu, and Toy were here waiting for its completion. Bingo. The great tree has leveled up. Bingo. The great tree has leveled up. Bingo. The great tree has leveled up. Lady Cell. No, it's nothing. Celestina who was surprised at the sudden notice 
that the great tree had leveled up, let out a voice subconsciously. Backquote that was dangerous point no one can hear this other than me. However, this kind of a sudden announcement in her mind was bad for her heart as usual. She could only praise herself that she didn't scream in surprise. Backquote the great tree was at level 5, so it should have reached level 8 now. Celestina had memories from her previous life, where she had played this fantasy game for girls named Backquote Maiden of Asgeral. For that reason, she was able to use the game system, the Asgeral system. The level of the great tree was one of the skills of the system. As you level up, your territory receives many benefits. If your own house is constructed then it levels up to level 6. Level 7 when you open a shop in the territory. And level 8, when you make your own specialty product of the village. It was thanks to the honey and the hand cream made using honey, that the tree had reached level 8. Hisu, can you please ask Mr. Gats how long it will take before the mansion is complete? Yes. I will. When Celestina requested that of Hisu he immediately went inside the mansion. The actual reason why she had sent him away was that she couldn't check the system screen with Hisu around. Yosh. Asgaral system. Start up. Celestina wrinkled up. Great tree owned. Level 8 guardian beast. Toy territory owned. Albert kingdom. Wrinklet territory district 2 people. 28 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 4 Vegetation grows well in a 25 meter radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar Level 2 The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Blessings of the Amulet Level 2 No monsters come within 3 kilometers of the Great Tree. Territory named Yield increases primitive great tree, the growth rate of the great tree increases specialty of the village, the recognition of the village increases, one hit KO, attack power increases donation heart, the shrine shop is available child of the territory, the physical strength of the people in the village increases prayer heart, the endurance of the people in the village, increases blessings of the shrine, yield of the harvest increases yes. Yes. The great tree has safely reached level 8. If I remember it correctly, a new skill is acquired, once the great tree reaches level 10. A little bit more, since she had gained some skills by completing certain quests, the village of Selin had become a better place to live in. At this rate, the level will go up steadily. Backquota. Since the level has increased the great tree may also grow. After I'm done looking around the mansion once it's completed, I'll go and water it. While Celestina was thinking about those things, Gats and Hisu came out of the mansion. Lady Cell, the construction is over. We can go in and look around now. Really? I'm so happy. Mr. Gats, thank you so much for constructing my mansion. It must have been tiresome right? No, no, not at all. Since I was working for you Lady Celestina, I was really happy, nothing was tiring. Gats was the one that did the carpentry and made the fields in Selin village. He had dark red brown hair which was held back with a bandana. He had a stubble on his chin. Working in his prime 30s he was the leader of all the youngsters. He immediately guided them into the mansion. Backquote instead of calling it a mansion, it's cuter to call it backquote the little mansion. They entered the mansion, that was constructed with light colored wood to find, that the entrance hall and the staircase, that would lead them to the second floor. There was no problem, even if there were some visitors, the size was big enough. Gats began to explain. The door to the left of the entrance is the door to the reception room and the guest room. Please use it when you receive guests. To the right is the living room and the dining area is beyond that. It's amazing. The reception was big enough to entertain visitors. She would get the tabla and other essential items from the royal capital. 
The guest room had large windows that allowed a lot of natural light to flow in. It might be good to decorate it with stylish lace curtains. Back quote I want to decorate it with paintings as well. Thinking about the interior led her into a beautiful daydream. The living room was one size bigger than the reception room. There was more than enough space to put a sofa for four. Celestina was excited. She wanted to prepare a sofa and a table quickly. Back quote I want to place the platinum rose that I received from Lord Soratek here as well. The platinum rose plant was a gift from Soratek to her when they were in the flower town of back quote Curic. The inner petals of the platinum rose shone brilliantly and they turned a pale blue on the outside. They went in to find the dining room. The kitchen was further inside. The atmosphere in the dining area was a peaceful space where food could be eaten in contentment. Compared to a big lonely dining room where she had to eat silently, she much preferred this smaller room with this kind of atmosphere. As for the kitchen, she didn't know anything about cooking in this world, so she couldn't judge. She would ask her dad to check it out later. Let's head to the second floor next. Please be careful while climbing up. Gats went up the staircase to the second floor followed by Celestina, Hisu, and Toy. The second floor had a long corridor with windows at equal intervals. There were one large room and three smaller rooms. The large room was Celestina's and the three smaller rooms were for her servants and helpers, so they would be used by Hisu and Adet. Back quote we must immediately prepare your room lady cell. Thank you Hisu, but please prioritize the first floor first. If we have guests then we can immediately respond. Understood. Besides, even though the mansion was done with its construction, Celestina couldn't live here right now. She wanted to do so in the future, so she had to prepare several things fitting of a lord such as a chef and servants. But she was looking forward to it. Celestina looked relaxed. Celestina cheerfully smiled in joy. After checking out the house, Celestina, Hisu and Toy went to the great tree. Hisu immediately had the water ink and prepared. Here Lady Cell. Thank you Hisu. The moment Celestina watered the great tree, the tree started to shine brightly and it suddenly grew taller. The stem of the tree had now turned brown from green and its height was taller than Celestina. You were amazing. It grew so much in one shot point is it, because it understands that you went to the great shrine and that you possess the blessings of a goddess. Back quote it's because the level of the great tree went up. Even if she were to say that, Hisu or the others wouldn't understand. Celestina was the only one that could use the system, increase the level of the great tree, and use the skills. It's great if it had grown, because of the power of my blessings, but I don't know how to use that power. She really wanted to be able to use the power of her blessings freely at her will, but she hasn't been able to use it even once, since the time she transformed the black flower on the great tree into white with the power of her blessings. But she also wondered whether she could use such a power, the power to change her destiny, so freely with the red was alright to do so. Back quote it's kind of complicated. But Celestina was the lord of the second district of a small village named Selin. She really wanted to be able to use the power in case there was any kind of an emergency. She remembered the time when she touched the great tree of the great shrine. At that time, the dormant power within her seemed to be overflowing, that's what she felt. However, she couldn't feel that anymore. When she touched her own great tree, the reality of that moment in the great shrine didn't take place here. Perhaps it is reckless for a human to use the power of the god so freely like that. Lady Cell, woof, at Celestina's words, both Hisu and Toy seemed to feel a little down. I'm sorry, I guess I just dampened the mood. Point I've heard, that you can talk to the deity, that has blessed you, and borrow their power. 
talk to them? At Hisu's words, Celestina remembered the scene in the game. Backquote come to think of it, there was some kind of a godly effect behind the heroine. Till now she believed that it was just a production effect so didn't bother with it, but maybe it was actually equal to having borrowed the power of the deity. Perhaps it may be possible to have a dialogue with the deity. Lady Cell, I'll put away the watering can. Why don't you try talking to the goddess? I'll try it out. She inhaled deeply and slowly closed her eyes. She tried to converse with the goddess that gave her the blessings exactly as suggested by Hisu. Backquote I don't know the goddess that had bestowed her blessings on me, but I have a feeling that my feelings will reach her. If that wasn't the case point then surely she wouldn't have been able to change her fate that day when Miria touched her tree and a black flower bloomed on it. I still don't know your name. However, if my voice is reaching you then please, somehow show me some of the power of that blessing. When Celestina finished her prayer, her left eye slowly became warm. Her rose pink eye turned baby pink and the mark of the seal appeared in her eye. Celestina opened her eyes. She couldn't believe that her words had really reached the goddess. Hisu, I... Lady Cell, the seal of blessing has appeared in your left eye. The goddess has responded to me hasn't she? She was so happy with just that. Ah uh, however, almost immediately, the warmth in her eye vanished, and her left eye returned to normal once again. Backquote it couldn't have been too easy. However, for Celestina who was never able to use her blessings, this was a big step forward. In fact, she felt that this progress was so big, that it was 1 years worth, no, 10 years worth. Your eye has returned back to normal. Yes, but this was good enough for me. I'm really happy. Thank you Hisu point I didn't expect that it was this important to talk to the deity. I'm honored to be of help to you Lady Cell. Hisu smiled cheerfully, and Celestina began to wonder about the person who Hisu heard this from. Of course, it could be just a coincidence. However, whenever Hisu is here point he always gives me direction as to what I need to do etc. He had even told her that she had the seal of blessings in her left eye, and had even urged her to go to her great tree and deal with it when the black flower grew on her tree. Backquote does Hisu know something very important? Or is there something else? Moreover, the divine beast toy stayed with him, so he couldn't be just your regular person. He was an orphan, but Celestina really didn't know anything else, anything more about Hisu. He was really earnest, Hisu was a great ally, a reassuring ally to Celestina. Backquote would it be fine to ask Hisu about himself? She was afraid that she would make him remember something unpleasant, but Celestina wanted to ask him about his blessings. Backquote right now I feel like it even more. Hey, Hisu ah, Lady Celestina. When she finally decided to ask Hisu about it, and called out to him, a voice called out to Celestina. Jisel had called out to her. She had come along with one of the guards that were dispatched to the village. They kind of looked like parent and child, since they were holding hands and walking. Jissel, Mr. Kelvin. When Celestina called out their names, Jissel bowed her head immediately, and Kelvin saluted her. Good day, Lady Celestina. The village is peaceful today as well. One of the children of this village, Jissel, the first child from the village to receive their blessings. An adorable girl with a dumpling hairstyle. The other one was the captain of the guards, Kelvin. A strong man, that had red brown hair, that was parted in the center. He was 29 years old and the oldest amongst the guards in the village. He along with the other guards were dispatched to this village as human resources, by Earl Saltimal as an apology for his daughter, Miria's rude conduct. But now they had already blended onto the village and were very dependable. 
Eh, the great tree became really tall. It was still small today morning the growth of the great tree is really immeasurable to me. Jissel's mouth was hanging open in shock, it felt it would fall off, and Kelvin looked impressed. However, in their unified opinion, it translated to backquote Lady Celestina is amazing. Celestina smiled and looked at Kelvin. Are you used to the village yet? Yes, thanks to you. All the villagers cooperate, and there is no quarrel. And since the surrounding area is a wasteland, it's easy to keep alert. Hearing that things were moving smoothly in the village, Celestina was relieved. The care of the livestock is also going well. The children have decided the order, and then they take turns to care for them. Celestina looked at where Calvin was pointing. That was the barn. This was also something that she had received as an apology. Earl Saltimore had given her 10 horses, 10 goats, and 10 sheep in apology, but having so many animals suddenly was quite a challenge to care for, so they would bring some others at a later date. Moreover, Earl Saltimore had also given the resources to make two wells in the village, so the village had become a lot easier to live in. It was going so well that it was almost scary. But since the village has developed so far, it was only natural that the great tree grew. After all, this is the village that is loved by Lady Celestina and the great tree. Mr. Kelvin. I may be a guard that was dispatched to this village, but I'm extremely proud of it. Kelvin kneeled in front of the great tree and began to pray. Please continue to protect Selin village from here on as well. Please do so. Jissel followed right after Kelvin and began to pray. Backquote I must do my best as a lord to respond to their expectations. There were still many things that needed to be done for the village. She wanted to make a field of 100 different flowers around the great tree in the future. Perhaps someday another divine beast would be attracted to the village due to that, and become friends with Toy. Of course, that was all still a long way away. Kelvin finished his prayer and he suddenly seemed to have remembered something as he looked at Celestina. Ah the carriages came in earlier. We've made some parking spaces near the entrance of the village, so they have been parked there. So they are parked now. Thank you, Mr. Kelvin. No. I'm glad that Mr. Nicholas prepared such good carriages. Selin village had no means of transportation to date. That's why the villagers used to walk till the town of Harmel by foot until Celeste in a camel but they were able to purchase the carriages from the proceeds from the sale of potato chips and hand cream. With this, all the villagers would be able to use it. They would now be able to go to other towns or villages freely. Two wagons had been purchased. One was spacious falling distance travel and the other could take a lot of luggage. Even though we are guards, we also know how to ride a carriage. We've spoken to Mr. Anton, and it has been decided that we will be teaching the three young men of the village to learn how to drive a carriage. Is that fine? It's not part of your work we don't mind. We're already a part of the village. Thank you. Celestina was really happy to know that such good people had come to the village when Calvin proudly declared that they could depend on them. She could only look forward to the development of Selin village from here on as well. Celestina, Hisu, and Toy were taking a stroll around the village. This land that was originally a wasteland now had vegetation planted. There were benches next to the trees as well. It was developing little by little. Woof woof, Toy noticed the goats grazing nearby, and ran up to them. Backquote me they all gathered together, once Toy reached them. For some reason, they had come to believe, that Toy was their leader of sorts. Backquote well, I think it would be good, if a dog were to command them though. The goats in the village were gentle. They never went on a rampage. Since they could also be milked, they provided to the diet of the village. However, there was a problem. 
since the area around Selin village was a wasteland, there wasn't enough food for the goats. Backquote moreover, there is no expert here however, so Lesina couldn't hire an expert at the moment. It was a complex issue and she wanted to sigh. There were still many things that needed to be done. Lady so looks like the goats are returning back to the bard. Hisu said. Celestina looked ahead to find that Eric, a young man from Selen village was guiding the goats back to the barn along with the help of two children. Toy helped them out by barking. Woof woof, he looks like a guard dog of the village. That's right. If the animals of the village can be kept under control thanks to Toy then that would be great. Celestina and Hisu laughed as they watched Toy. He looked adorable as he ran around wagging his tail with that soft furry body. It was winter already. It would start snowing soon as well, and the goats would remain in the barn throughout during that period. Backquote it would be nice if we could create a little more grazing environment by spring. While Celestina was thinking of all this, Toy finished his work and returned to Celestina. Woof. Thank you for your hard work toy. That was wonderful goat handling. Woo off. As Celestina praised him and stroked his fur, Toy stuck his chest out and looked proud. His fur was so super soft that Celestina almost gave in to her expression, but she held back since Hisu was there as well. Toy, don't play with Lady Sol too much. You'll dirty her clothes. Woof. Even when Toy entered the house with dirty feet Hisu scolded him. But Toy's round eyes and sloppiness were adorable too. Celestina stroked Toy and promised him that she would play with him a lot later on. Celestina then went around the village once and inspected the completed wells and the carriages that had arrived. It wasn't big enough to be called an inspection though. Everyone happily called out to Celestina when they saw her walking around the village. They passed by the village square to find that there were people at the potato chips stall. They seemed to have come over from other towns for shopping here. There was a big branch of the Pickard Company in Selin Village. They were selling hand cream here from Cellar Honey, Celestina's brand. Only the main store in Harmel and the branch store in Selin Village are selling the hand cream, so customers would often come here for purchase. It would be nice if there was a large line every day for the hand cream but unfortunately, the production had not caught up. For that reason, not many people came either. The ones that came were the ones that wondered whether there would be enough stock about now. Ah, Lady Celestina. Lady Celestina. When they walked ahead from the potato chips stall, two guards from Selin village called out to her. They were still in their late twenties, so they were still at the age where they enjoyed potato chips, snacks, and sweets. Thank you for your hard work. How is the village doing? Yes. There are no issues. Thank you. Are you in the middle of a break? When she saw the potato chips in their hands, Celestina asked the question and they nodded yes. We're on our break ever, since we came to Selin village, we can eat this kind of delicious stuff. I moved. Me too. Actually, I'm not good with potatoes, but if it's this then I can keep eating. I'm glad you liked them. Celestina smiled at the two of them who liked eating the chips daily. However. Please don't eat too much alright. It uses a lot of oil, so it isn't too good for the body if eaten every day. We'll be careful. It was disappointing, but they nodded yes at Celestina's words. If Celestina stayed there for long then they wouldn't be able to take a break properly, so she ended the conversation there and went ahead. Please continue to protect us. Yes. Leave it to us. They saluted at Celestina, and with a light bow, and they left the place. Backquote it would be good, if they could relax a little more, but it seems difficult. There doesn't seem to be any problem, woof woof, it would be dangerous, if wild animals or monsters tried to invade, 
so Hisu was relieved as he watched the two guards off. Yes. All the guards seemed to be used to the village. She was thinking that, if there was an opportunity then she would like to thank Earl Sultanal. Backquota. But. Three days from now is the unveiling banquet at the mansion in the royal capital. It's the banquet for unveiling the blessings of the goddess, that Lady Sel received right? Is there something that you need? Since Hisu was urging her to say something she smiled, and told him, that she would like to thank Earl Sultimal, if he were to attend the banquet. Hisu seemed amazed. Even though they brought you so much trouble? But Lady Miria's father Earl Sultimal hasn't brought me any trouble. She smiled thinking that, although her way of thinking may be a little soft and naive, the Earl had really dispatched excellent guards. For the benefit of her territory, it may be a good idea, to get along with the Earl, regardless of Lady Miria. Back quote well, he's an old friend of father. So it couldn't turn out, to be bad Celestina thought happily. If there was any issue, then it was definitely the one that was training to be a shrine maiden currently Miria. If she were to get married to Sora Tech and become the queen, would I be an obstacle for Earl Saltimal? If that were to happen then the excellent Earl who works for the knights and the military would become a threat to her she thought. Backquote yes, keeping Lady Miria aside, I should share a good relationship with Earl Saltimal. Celestina was convinced, she realized that she must do her best to socialize for the village. The fact that Celestina was blessed by a goddess, was to be announced in a big way at the unveiling banquet at the Rinklet Mansion in the royal capital today. Backquote I'm not good at being the center of attention. Celestina, the star of today's banquet was wishing, that evening shouldn't come as she spent her time in her room. Hisu was waiting in the room with her, and Toy was taking an afternoon nap at the window. This scene looked pretty warm and peaceful. Lord Soratek will be escorting you today right? Celestina nodded yes at Hisu's question. That's right. I'll enter the venue after Lord Soratek comes, together with him. Yes. This was the first time for Hisu, that a party was being hosted at the Rinklet Mansion. Therefore, there were many things that he had to keep in mind. As Celestina's apprentice butler, he had to make various preparations and guide Lord Soratek when he came. Hisu and Celestina both thought that they were very busy today. Backquote moreover, my dress today is even more luxurious, since it was the unveiling party, both Soratek and Bethel enthusiastically went to the shop. Both of them wanted to give her a congratulatory dress. For that reason, the dress was twice as expensive compared to usual. I'll bring you another cup of tea. Thank you Hisu. Just as Hisu was about to leave the room, Celestina's maiden rented her room. Her face looked incredibly motivated. Lady Celestina, let's get ready for the hot water. Let's enthusiastically prepare for today. You're how ready? Celestina was surprised. Because it was only afternoon right now. Isn't that obvious? Hisu, don't prepare tea. Give her fruit water instead. Understood. Looks like the bath right now was inevitable. Woof. Ah. Toy. Did we wake you up? I'm going for a bath now. So you can sleep some more if you'd like. From now on she would have to go through some rigorous preparations so Celestina petted his soft fur to energize herself. This softness was irresistible. Lady Celestina, you really like Toy don't you? Yes. He's adorable. He surely is adorable but. Anna said and smiled. Backquota. That's right. Toy was a divine beast. He didn't get attached to people that easily. More like he didn't get attached to anyone that didn't hold blessings from a god or goddess. That's why it was difficult for a person like Anna who was blessed by a spirit to touch him. Backquote he is a divine beast that protects the territory. 
toy with a ribbon around his neck looked really adorable, but if he were to bear his fangs then his strength would be unrivaled. You shouldn't ever become his enemy. He was the divine beast. He may even hold enough power to destroy the kingdom of Albert. Celestina was glad that Toy was her ally. Lady Celestina, let's go. Yes. She cleaned herself from head to toe in the bath, got massaged afterward, put on some perfume that she received as a gift from Sora Tech, and turned into a beautiful woman. Your beautiful Lady Celestina. Thank you. Her silvery white hair was beautifully braided for an up style. Some wisps of hair came down to frame her face and neck. She exuded an incredibly dreamy sex appeal. She wore an empire line dress with folded lace in pale blue and rose pink that matched her eye color. Looking at herself in the mirror, Celestina was breathless. Backquote as expected of the person that the catchphrase backquote beautiful lady was attached to in the game. She almost fell in love with herself. Celestina stood in front of the mirror and Anna smiled happily. Let's go to the reception room. His Highness Soratek is waiting. Yes, we cannot let him what. When she entered the reception room, Soratek showed her a bright expression. Cell. You look great. Thank you a lord Soratek. Soratek matched Celestina well, and they looked picturesque when they stood next to each other. Watching Soratek smiling at her so happily Celestina curiously wondered about when he was planning to break the engagement with her. It's finally the day of the announcement. How long have we waited for this? Since I was known as the one with no blessings, I have brought a lot of inconvenience to you and my family, so I'm glad that it will get cleared now. People already knew that she had the blessings of a goddess by now, but now that she realized that it would be announced, once more Esh was nervous. Backquote I have to go proudly as the lord of Selin village, no, the lord of the second district. Celestina took in a small deep breath and Soratek extended his arm out in order to escort her. The invited guests were already at the venue waiting for Celestina's appearance. When Celestina and Soratek entered the party venue they were greeted with a big applause. Congratulations on your blessings. As expected of Lady Celestinato have been blessed by the goddess. Those words rang in the venue hall. There were many guests here today that were close to the Rinklet family. Of course, there were quite a few guests here that disliked Celestina as well and were glaring at her. They were all smiling on the surface, but she didn't know what they were thinking internally. Backquote there are many here that want me to be dumped to Soratek's VMK. There were many that wanted their daughters to be wed to Soratek. Of course, Celestina didn't bother about such things. Unfortunately, the crown prince was bound to the heroine, Celestina thought. Of course, people wouldn't tell her that straightforwardly. Sell, this way. Father. Bethel had been waiting for Celestina beyond the wave of people. Next to him was her mother and her brothers. Marquis, I've been looking forward to today's unveiling party. Thank you your highness Soratek. The fact that things have turned out this way and we know that she has indeed received blessings is because you went to the great shrine together with her. Soratek exchanged greetings with Bethel and also with her brothers. The eldest son of the Rinklet family, Oswald Rinklet. He was a strong man with short ash grey hair. He stayed at the dormitory at the royal castle and worked with the knights. Since it was Celestina's announcement today, he had come home after a long time. The second son of the Rinklet family, a soldier Rinklet. He had lightly pigmented golden hair and baby pink eyes. Unlike Oswald, he commuted from home. He came home late in the night every day so Celestina and he couldn't meet each other generally. Sal, I couldn't really come back home these days. Congratulations on your blessings. 
I couldn't really meet you these days either but congratulations Cell, as expected of my sister. Thank you, brother Oswell and brother Asorge. The two brothers congratulated her several times and spoiled her. They had met their sister after a long time, so they wanted to spoil her. However, Bethel put a pause to all that. The greetings are fine, but the unveiling banquet for Cell comes first. Bethel clapped his hands and everyone quieted down and looked towards them. Celeste in a breath caught in her throat when the nobles that she was familiar with focus on her. Back quote it's good that I'm no longer looked at with contempt. It was refreshing to see that the aristocrats were looked at her with value now. Back quote how strange. Bethel took Celeste in his hand, went to the stage and began to speak. Everyone, thank you for attending this banquet today. I'm incredibly happy to host this unveiling banquet for my daughter Celestina today. Bethel explained to them that Celestina had received the blessings of a goddess and about what she was doing right now. I'm sure that many of you are interested in the hand cream from Cellar Honey right? It's an amazing product that Celestina developed in her village. He also told me that he loves it, and uses it every day. However, it's difficult to get your hands on it. The moment he said that a large portion of the audience laughed, and said, that's right. However, some women and young girls also seemed to look sad and stern. They probably wanted some, but they couldn't get their hands on it. In the second district of the Rinklet territory, even though it is still small, there is a great tree growing with gentle white flowers blooming on it. I would be pleased if everyone could continue showering it with care. Bethel finished his speech and was awarded with applause. It was Celestina's turn next. Bethel had told her that it was fine if she just gave a simple greeting. Till now she was known as the one with no blessings and was told various things. Since that was the case. Ed Celestina was uncomfortable, she didn't need to stay in the banquet for long. Celestina would like to do that but, back quote as a lord of the village, I would like to now stand on equal footing with them. She breathed deeply and calmed her heart. She then looked straight ahead, corrected her posture, pulled up her chin, and put on a gracious smile. I'm really grateful that you are attending my unveiling banquet. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Although I don't know her name yet, I have been blessed by a goddess. The chief of the great shrine Lucaria informed me. At the mention of Lucaria's name, the noise grew. The chief of the great shrine was someone that everyone knew about, and yet even an aristocrat couldn't meet easily. He was that kind of person. Lucaria had a calm and low profile and was always smiling. He was that kind of a person, but you couldn't tell what was reflecting in his eyes. However, he had requested to become Celestina's fianche. I will try to grow the great tree in the second district of the Rinklet territory big and healthy, and try not to embarrass all of you. I'm still young, but please do take care of me. When she exposed herself as the lord of the district there was applause all around. There were many who wished that Celestina would do well as a lord and there were also many that felt that Celestina was an obstacle. Back quote but it's obvious that I'm going to do my best as the lord. She wanted to lay the foundation so that even after the ending of this game takes place, she will be fine being banished point, but she had already come to love sell in village already. After the official greetings. It was time for chatting. The ones that came over to Celestina were mostly women. The main topic was Cellar Honey, and how they definitely wanted to get some. It was good to accommodate the nobles that Bethel was close to, but it wouldn't be good to overdo it point it was difficult to draw the line. However, the production right now wasn't a lot so there wasn't enough stock available. So it would still be a rare item difficult to acquire for a while. 
while Celestina was in the midst of talking about Cella Honey, her brothers came over. Sorry for interrupting your conversation. Lord Oswell and Lord Assulge, there is no need to apologize. Lady Celestina, we'll be leaving now. Thank you. She sighed in relief, now that she was free from that conversation. Our sister has become the center of attention. That's my cell. A soldier was smirking, and Oswal looked impressed. Did something happen? Brothers, yeah, that's right. I saw El Saltimal, so we came to inform you. Is that so? Thank you brother Asulj. Earl Saltimal was the father of the heroine of this game Miria. He was a strong man that was working for the knights. However, ever since his wife died point he had spoiled Miria too much due to his mourning. Escorted by her brothers, she was taken to another room. Saw a tech, Earl Saltimal, and Bethel were already in there. Lady Celestina. Congratulations on your unveiling party. Earl Saltimal said and bowed deeply. He had short grey hair and gentle sagging eyes. However, his body looked strong. It was probably due to the fact that he worked with the knights. Celestina looked at the Earl and slowly greeted him. It's the first time we are meeting isn't it Earl? I'm Bethel's daughter Celestina. Nice to meet you. Thank you for various things including the guards that you dispatched to Selin village. She smiled cheerfully, and the earl shook his head saying not at all. Originally, Miria brought a lot of trouble to you Lady Celestina so this is my apology to you. Please accept them without hesitation. He bowed again deeply. I'm deeply sorry for what my daughter did. Point please raise your head Earl Saltimal. I don't mind it at all. Thank you for your generous consideration. She originally wanted to decline his apology and give him her thanks, but he ended up apologizing again. Backquote what a straightforward person. Bethel had told her before that Earl Saltimal was a good man. It's just that he had spoiled his daughter too much. However, he was watching over her strictly now, and was getting her trained to become a shrine maiden at the small shrine. Therefore, something like that wouldn't happen in the future, probably. I do get reports regularly, but if there is any problem with the guards, please do let me know. I'll deal with it. Everyone is really good. Selen Village's security was very weak, so it's really helpful to have them with us. I'm glad to hear that. In fact, she would like to hire them permanently, not just have them dispatched. They were hard-working men who always kept the village in mind. They were serious and the villagers trusted them a lot. They liked the potato chips, and got used to the place quickly. Celestina and the other villagers were very grateful to them. Since Earl Saltimal is here as well why, don't you tell us more about Selin Village? That's right, I want to hear all about it. Yes. Since the soldier and Bethel told her, she sat down next to Soratek and began to chat with them for a while. The unveiling party was successfully over, and it was now the day after the party. Celestina was tired as expected, and was spending the day relaxing at the mansion in the royal capital. The plan was to leave for Harmel the next day, and then go to Selin village. She looked out of the window, to see Hisu and Toy were playing together in the garden. Backquota, looks fun. She really wanted to join them, but she was the graceful daughter of Marquis, so she couldn't do, that she shrugged her shoulders. Backquote it's fun even just looking at them. A few minutes after Toy started frolicking around a person on horseback hurriedly rushed into the garden. What was the problem? The person that had rushed into the garden on horseback was a debt from Selin village. Did something happen to the village? If that wasn't the case, a debt wouldn't need to rush here on horseback. Not in a carriage, but on a horse. There was certainly some emergency in the village. Maybe the reason why Adet had come in was 
that the servants of the house knew her. Selesina hurriedly left her room and went to the entrance. Hisu brought a debt inside. Lady Selesina. A debt rushed over to her crying. Just as Selesina had expected, something big was sure to have happened in the village. Selesina gently consoled the out of breath Adet and calmly asked her. Adet, what happened? Monsters near the village, monsters have come. Monsters, woof. Selesina and Hisu were shocked, and Toy barked in surprise. Till now, the village had never been damaged by monsters before. Selesina suppressed her distress, and checked with Adet. Backquote since we have the skill backquote blessings of the amulet, there is no way that the village has been invaded. The skill backquote blessings of the amulet at level 2 ensured that no monsters could come within 3 kilometers of the great tree. The damage had to be outside the village. There is no damage to the village. When Rio, Eric, and Roger went for a hunt, they were greatly injured. We went to the town of Harmel and asked for a doctor to treat them. Is there any danger to their lives? No. Apparently, they were seriously injured, but they were conscious. Celestina was relieved to know that they were conscious as she proceeded to ask about the village. What happened to the monster? It would be dangerous if the monster were to enter the village so Gats and some guards went to subdue the monster. But it seems to be a very strong monster could they win? Or would they lose? They might be even seriously injured. Adet and the other villagers were really worried about Gats and the others. Of course we stopped them. However, it would be dangerous for all the villagers if the monster were to invade the village so. Point is that so? Thank you for explaining the situation to me Adet. You did very well coming all the way here to inform me. Yes. As expected, due to the game's skill, the monster hadn't entered the village. But she couldn't tell them that. Backquote in the first place, no one other than me knows about the game so there is no reason for them to believe me. She had to quickly increase the level of the skill backquote blessings of the amulet, and have a village doctor four times like these. There were just too many things that needed to be done. Celestina held her head. But, this wasn't the time to worry about that. Let's head to Selin village immediately. Hisu, please prepare the carriage. Yes, woof. While Hisu and Toy were out preparing the carriage, Celestina tried to calm a debt down. Anna and the other servants had come over after hearing the commotion and handed over some water to Adette. Thank you. Adette took a breather and Anne looked at Celestina. Isn't it dangerous to go there, when a monster had appeared? Isn't it fine for you to stay in the mansion, and give out the instructions Lady Celestina? Thank you, Anna. But I'm a lord so at times like this is such important times, I must go there. Besides, there is the great tree in Selin village. So I will be protected. That's true but. Anna was worried about Celestina and shook her head. Anna had been serving Celestina for the longest time. And felt that Celestina was a princess. That needed to be protected. However. She wasn't a princess. But a lord instead. Celestina didn't say anything. And looked at Anna with a majestic smile. The quickly hurried to the village to find an injured guard. Lady Celestina. Are you alright? When she rushed to him, the guard bowed to her and apologized. He was biting his lips, and looked extremely apologetic. We were dispatched to this village, in order to protect it, but it wasn't worth it. That's not true. You bravely faced the monster that not something that not worth anything. Thank you. The guard raised his head, and informed them, that Gats and the others were still fighting the monster. A, the monster that came up near the village, is a backquote rock snake? Celestina trembled when she understood who the enemy was. The rock snake was a snake, that was made entirely of rock. 
Its defense power was quite high and ordinary iron swords couldn't hurt it at all. After hearing the story, Celestina decided to go to the Rock Snake. She really wanted to visit the injured Eric, Roger, and Rio to check up on them, but right now it was more important to go to Gaps and the others that were fighting the Rock Snake and check how they were doing. Rio, Eric, and Roger were being treated at the soldier station in the village, but there was no danger to their life. Back quote but how do we defeat the rock snakes a lesson it could use her bow, but that wasn't really powerful. The only thing that could damage those strong scales of rock would be the strong power of a spirit with a spirit ball. Back quote ah, I had given the spirit balls to Mr. Anton earlier. Maybe Mr. Gats has taken that with him to subjugate the rock snake. With that. There was a possibility that even the rock snake would be defeated instantly. Even the guards were aware of the power of the spirit ball. Celestina quickly went to Anton who was with some of the guards. Lady Salazin. Mr. Anton, what happened to the guards? Did they take the spirit ball with them? Gats took the spirit ball of water with him. Many of the guards are injured. After Rio and the others that discovered the rock snake returned to the village, Gats went to fight the rock snake with five of the guards. However, two of the guards were injured and had to return. Back quote I'm a little relieved to know that he took the spirit ball of water along with him but there are still so many people injured. Their opponent was not a straightforward easy to defeat opponent. Right now their treatment is nearly over. Since we are in this kind of a situation, I wanted two of the guards to stay back and protect the village, while three go to help Gats. Understood please take care of the village. I also have a spirit ball with me, so I think I can be of some help. Anton paled at Celestina's words. Absolutely not. There is no need for you to go to such a dangerous place Lady Celestina. Gats would also never want something like that. Going to where the rock snake is, could result in a potentially serious injury. That's why Anton protested so strongly. It wouldn't do, if Celestina were to get injured. Backquote, it's true that I don't have an escort knight. Even if she had one it would probably be surprising for her to go to such a dangerous place. She understood intents and Anna's worries who tried to stop her back at the mansion. Backquote I have to hire an escort knight as well. There were so many things that she still needed to do. However, I'll be going for now. I'll try not to go to the front line. When Celestina said that, the guards waiting at the back took a step forward and kneeled down with a determined look in their eyes. We will definitely protect you Lady Celestina. Please leave it to us. We'll fight the monster. Anton sighed when he saw that the guards had decided to along with her to support Gats. Anton understood that right now there was no time to argue. Point I understand. However, absolutely do not get close to the monster. Yes. Please take care of the village point while I'm away. Leave it to me. Celestina, Hisu. Toy, and the three guards went to where the rock snake had appeared. Gats and the other guards were battling the rock snake. Backquote so that's the rick snake. It was large. About 2 meters in length and quite some distance away, but the intimidation reached all the way to where she was standing. The rock snake was a lot stronger than the trend fairy that she defeated earlier. The rock snake was definitely attacked but it had escaped any grievous injuries. Sure, you are up. Backquote our side is a lot weaker. Please go and support Mr. Gats. Yes. After Celestina called out to them from behind, three guards rushed to help Gats. All of them were wielding their swords vigorously, and they hit the rock hard scales of the rock snake. Backquote as expected. It's tough to hurt the rock snake with swords. Mr. Gats. A. Hey, Lady Celestina. Do you have the spirit ball? If you have that, 
even the hard scales of the rock snake would be hurt. Gats had been concentrating on the fight, and he thought that only the guards had come to support him, but he was shocked when he saw Celestina and Hisu in front of the carriage. He immediately realized when Celestina spoke and took out the spirit ball. There wasn't any opening for me to throw it till now, but if it's now, then maybe I can. The rock snake had been attacking furiously, so they had been on full defense so there was no chance to throw the spirit ball. Since the guards were now supporting Gats and attacking the rock snake, Gats could now prepare and get close enough to hit the rock snake. Rock snake, I'm your opponent. One of the guards shouted to distract the rock snake. The rock snake immediately turned his attention to the guard. He waved his stiff tail and went to attack the guard. Back quote that's dangerous. Celestina let out a scream and held her breath. The guard went ahead and swung his sword and managed to connect with the snake, but he bounced off the snake and was thrown back. However, they couldn't stop with their attack since Gats needed time to come close and hit the snake. As expected of the guards dispatched by Earl Saltimore, they were perfectly coordinated. Celestina was impressed. Back quote with this, the snake might be defeated easily. While the guards were holding the snake back, Gats came to an appropriate distance. Yosh, I'll throw the spirit ball. Once I give the signal, run. Yes. The soldiers replied to Gats's voice. Gats watched the rock snake and firmly held onto the spirit ball. He was watching since he wanted to aim at the rock snake's torso and not its tail. Celestina and Hissa quietly watched over the situation. Now. Gats shouted and the soldiers jumped away from the rock snake. There was a clear opening to the rock snake's torso since the tail was at the back. Back quote Yosh, we got it. Celestina made a victorious pose in her mind, since she felt convinced of victory. The spirit ball thrown by Gats was flying straight at the rock snake. Anyone would have thought that this was a confirmed victory. Shire, the threatened rock snake immediately lashed out its tongue. Hitting the spirit ball with its tongue, the rock snake deflected it to the sky where it exploded. Since the ball had exploded in the sky, the rock snake hadn't sustained any severe injuries. The rock snake then proceeded to attack the guards as he looked at Gats. The previous attack was the strongest until now. No way. Celestina was nervous. She had thought that the snake would have been defeated by this. Back quote it's alright since I still have a spirit ball with me. However, Gats couldn't even hit him, would she be able to? Celestina was anxious. Cold sweat drenched Celestina's back but this wasn't the time to be lost. She gripped the spirit ball tightly and looked at the rock snake. Shara. Celestina's legs felt weak at the snake's strength. Lady Cell, let's leave this to them and move back a little. Hisu. Celestina slowly shook her head at Hisu who had worriedly called out to her. She would definitely regret it if the villagers were injured because of her not throwing the ball. She felt a power in her trembling legs and looked ahead. It's only natural for me to protect the villagers. She responded clearly and threw the spirit ball. But since she didn't have enough power in her arms, the ball was thrown forward with weak strength. It would definitely fall just a few feet ahead of her. Back quote this will never reach the snake. Gats had only brought along one spirit ball with him so, if Celestina couldn't hit the snake with the one she just threw, it would all be over. What could she do? While she was despairing in her heart, she heard a strong voice. Woof, toy. Toy kicked off the ground and jumped high. He kicked the ball with his tail and aimed it at the rock snake. There was a large sound and the spirit ball hit the snake squarely in its torso. The ball exploded and water splashed all over. Shire, the rock snake shattered and fell. 
It was a huge success thanks to Toys who hit the ball with his tail unexpectedly. Point all the people present there noticed Toys' unexpected actions. Woof Toy looked at Celestina with the face that said back quote praise me. Ah, thank god that everyone is safe. Thank god, that's great. When they returned back to Selin village all of the people in the village welcomed them with tears in their eyes. They were really worried that someone might be grievously injured. The doctor that came over from the town of Harmel also had a relieved expression. We are back. Everyone is safe so please be relieved. However, it's not that no one is injured so please get them treated immediately. Yes, we'll prepare for doing the treatment. Anton said. Anton nodded at Celestina's request and guided Gats and the others to the soldier station. They were relieved once the treatment was over. It was so surprising. Toy was greatly successful. Toy. Gats and Anton were talking to each other while walking. Gats was telling him about what transpired. However, Anton didn't seem to understand the flow. Back quote that's right. Normally, you could never imagine that a dog would be able to take down a great monster. Celestina smiled and watched Hisu who was cleaning the carriage. The injured people including Gats had ridden the carriage earlier, so it had become a little dirty. Back quote I must quickly raise the level of the blessings of the amulet. Back quote blessings of the amulet was a skill that kept monsters and wild animals away from a certain radius of the great tree. There were three levels and right now she was at level 2. At level 3, no monsters or wild animals would appear within 5 kilometers of the great tree. There was a possibility that people may go hunting further than that, but normally for normal living, it was more than enough. Back quote the rock snake appeared a little within 5 kilometers of the great tree. She needed to quickly defeat monsters and level up. The condition for leveling up was to defeat 1000 monsters. I defeated about 100 monsters till now. I guess I must do my best every day. There is no other way is there? If it was in game, this would have been achieved quickly but right now it was real life. So she had had to be more careful, if something were to happen it would be worrisome for the people around her as well. Back quote I'll speak to Hisu, and start shooting every day. Celestina spent the day in her house in Selin village, and spent the night at the mansion in Harmel. That's how she spent her days these days once she reached the mansion in Harmel, she received a letter from Miria. She wanted to be forgiven for thinking back quote you are at receiving correspondence from her. Hisu prepared her tea and smiled at Celestina who was making that kind of a face. Isn't it fine to just throw it away without reading it? No, I'll read it properly. Celestina shook her head at Hisu who told her that so simply. She didn't know what was written inside, but Miria was the heroine of this game. There was a chance that this was a letter containing something important. She used a paper knife to open the envelope. The letter was written on cute paper with flower patterns. Lady Miria is an apprentice at the shrine right? Yes, that's right. Miria had touched Celestina's great tree without Celestina's permission which caused quite some issues. So she was sent to the shrine to learn as an apprentice. She was busy every day with strict training, but it seems that she had enough time to send a letter to Celestina. Back quote lovely rounded handwriting. Celestina read through the letter and was lost for words. An invitation to the small shrine. A. With that she can easily invite Lady Cell. She smiled at the surprised Hisu and told him the summary of the contents of the letter. Miria had gone to the small shrine in order to study as an apprentice. She was blessed by the god of fertility free, so she was staying in the shrine as a backquote shrine maiden. That blessing was pretty rare, so it was useful. The contents of her studying included studying about the gods and goddesses. Miria had mentioned in the letter 
that the power of her blessings had increased. For that reason she had invited Celestina to the small shrine, since she wanted to teach Celestina about it that was the purpose. Backquote somehow I can't imagine learning something from Miria. However, no matter what, Miria was the heroine of this game. So it was better for her to hear Miria out. Celestina thought. Celestina didn't want to get too involved. However, she judged that it would be better for her to have a proper relationship with her. I'll accept the invitation Hisu. Could you please make the preparations for applying to her? Certainly. Hisu prepared the stationery, pen, etc on the table, and called out to Celestina. It has been prepared. Backquote he had become more and more like a butler, after adjusting her schedule. To meet Miria at the small shrine Celestina spent her days shooting down monsters every day. Soon the preparations were complete, and she was ready to offer the honey to the king. The quality of the honey cultivated in Selen village by the flower bees was really high quality. They had decided to offer the honey to the king, before selling it on the market. It's already the 31st day of the month of winter, time flies fast. When I'm with Lady Cell time flies in the blink of an eye. I could have never imagined that I could have become an apprentice butler before this. It really suits you Hisu. Hisu was quite confused and anxious in the clothes of a butler earlier, but now he was really good at his work. Due to his thirst to learn, he had grown really fast. Celestina so looked at the honey that was placed on top of the table and took in a small deep breath. Shall we go? Yes. When was the last time that she had entered the royal castle? Celestina was wondering while she rode in the carriage. Once the judgment was passed that Celestina wasn't blessed, she attended the minimum necessary banquets and parties. Backquote AHH. The last time I went to the castle was during Lord Soratek's birthday. Soratek's birthday was on the 33rd of the month of Earth, which was next month. Therefore it was almost a year since she went to the castle. Backquote it's been far too long. I should prepare a present. Usually, she would take along some ornaments or accessories, but would it be alright to take honey? It was an offering for the king, the best quality product. Besides, she wanted him to taste the honey that was cultivated in Selen village. They reached the royal castle, while Celestina was in her thoughts. The door of the carriage opened from outside, and Hisu reached his hand out to her. Here Lady Cell. Thank you. She slowly alighted the carriage, and took Hisu with her to the audience. The king of this kingdom, father of the crown prince Soratek, was seated on a throne at the edge of a deep red carpet embroidered with golden thread. Celestina walked closer to him and kneeled down. It's been a long time your majesty. Yeah, it's been long. Please relax. Thank you. He seemed to be looking at her happily. Erwin Shire Albert. He had the same sky blue hair as Soratek and blue eyes. He had a gentle expression, and always kept his people's well-being in mind. He knew Celestina since the time she was a baby, so he was concerned for her when he got to know that she didn't receive any blessings. Erwin smiled. He was quite curious about the hand cream and he couldn't help it. I never expected that the second district in the Rinkla territory could produce something like this can I see it? I'm quite curious about it. Of course your majesty. Celestina handed over a beautiful glass jar of honey to the king that was made by a skilled craftsman from Pickett Company. The honey was such a beautiful color it looked like it was sparkling. This honey back quote honey of the great tree was cultivated in Selen village. Honey of the great tree. Yes. When she was planning to name it, she didn't know how to include the back quote great tree into the name. But the flower bee was a special bee that wouldn't appear unless there was a great tree. Besides, 
The nectar from those bees was the pinnacle of delicious taste. That's why there was no way that this honey would lose with that name. This honey has only been made by the blessings of the great tree. Would you allow me to add the great tree to its name? HMM point get me a spoon. Irvin undid the lid and put the spoon in the jar full of honey. It was so transparent that you could see to the other side through the honey. It's beautiful. He muttered as he put a spoonful in his mouth. His eyes became wide. He put another spoonful in his mouth. I never expected that something this delicious even exists. Thank you for your words, your majesty. Feels like I won't be able to eat the honey that I have been eating till now. He found it so delicious that he was captivated by the honey Owen said. The backquote honey of the great tree I would like the royal family to continue eating this year after. Thank you. This meant that she would become the purveyor for the royal family. That was such a prestigious position that many merchants aimed to become a royal warrant. Backquote I expected it to be received highly, but I didn't expect Point to become the purveyor for the royal family. Celestina involuntarily felt teary. Celestina gracefully bowed and successfully finished her offering. Or so she thought. By the way Miss Celestina. Yes? Erwin seemed to look at her with an expression that was softer than the one he held earlier. I'm really glad to hear that you are indeed blessed. I had never expected that I would be presented with something. Your Majesty Erwin Point thank you. I'm really happy that I can serve the kingdom in this way. Celestina and Soratek were engaged and once she was judged that she wasn't blessed, he hadn't asked Soratek to break the engagement. For the good of the kingdom, it wouldn't do any good if the queen of the crown prince didn't hold any blessings. It didn't bring any merit to the kingdom. Moreover, surrounding countries would gossip and say that the queen of Albert didn't have any blessings. But his majesty Erwin had accepted her with a very generous heart. Celestina thought. Since Miss Celestina is the FMK of Soratek, I've known you since you were a baby. You're just like a daughter to me. If you ever need something then you can always come to me. I'm expecting much from you as the lord of a territory. Thank you. Celestina got onto the carriage with heavy feet. She was on her way to meet Miria since she was invited previously. Backquote. She didn't specifically mention a tea meeting though. It will probably be similar to the previous times. The small shrine of the Asgeral kingdom was very close to the royal castle. The small shrine had a stained glass that had the designs of gods and spirits. The walls were off-white. The pillars were carved with time. Celestina entered the shrine and immediately went to the reception room to ask for Miria. An appointment with the shrine maiden named Lady Miria Wright. I'll let her know. Please wait here in the reception room. Thank you. She was guided to the reception room, where she took a small rest. Hisu was looking around the room. The interior is similar to the great shrine. That's right the small shrine is the same everywhere. No matter the country. The shrine holds a neutral position. So the smaller shrines made in individual countries are the same. The scale of the shrine is never superior or inferior to the small shrines in other countries. Hisu nodded in understanding at Celestina's explanation. After a few minutes, there was a knock on the door. Once she received permission, Miria entered the room. It's been a long time Lady Celestina. I'm glad to meet you. Yes, it's been long. I'm glad to see that you look well. Miria extended her greetings to Celestina and Celestina responded back. Her posture was cleaner compared to before, and her movements were smoother. The shrine maidens were sure to have corrected her, since she was an apprentice there. The heroine Miria Saltimal was showing a bright face. She had an adorable face with yellow-green eyes. Her pink hair extended to her shoulders. 
She seemed like a person that you would want to protect. She was dressed in the robes of a shrine maiden. Lady Celestina, let me guide you to my room. Miria was an apprentice in the small shrine to learn etiquette, so it seemed like she could invite unrelated people into her room. Celestina nodded and followed Miria out of the room. On reaching her room, Miria served them some tea and sweets. She served some tea to Hisu as well who was waiting behind on a smaller table. Thank you Lady Miria. Thank you for your consideration. Celestina and Hisu extended their appreciation and Miria immediately began to speak. Looks like she had been waiting. I was really looking forward to meeting you Lady Celestina. I was told that we cannot invite friends here but I really wanted to teach you what I've learned, so I somehow managed to get permission. It's, is that so? Celestina had assumed that it was okay to invite people over, but she now realized that Miria had to do a lot in order to get permission. Celestina wondered whether she wanted to call her that badly. She drank her tea in order to calm down and then looked at Miria. Point you had mentioned in your letter that you had powered up the power of your blessings. Yes. That's why I wanted to teach it to Lady Celestina as well. Miria clapped her hands in delight and showed her a full smile. Teaching someone of a station higher than her like Celestina is a little tricky, but Celestina smiled as she was open to listening. Hisu looked like he couldn't believe his ears after hearing that Miria was talking about how she would teach Celestina, but maybe that wasn't the case. Lady Miria, you're blessed by the god of fertility free, right? You must surely be loved. Yes, that right. I've been studying about the gods here, and learned that talking to the gods is very important. I'll show it to you. Miria really seemed like she wanted to show the power of her blessings. She got up from the chair, and bought the small flower pot that was resting at the window. A pink flower that was usually seen everywhere was blooming on it. Backquote what is she planning to do? She placed the flower pot on the desk, folded her hands, and closed her eyes. She began to focus in order to pray. God of fertility, that has blessed me, please respond to my voice. As Mibria said that, a faint light wrapped around her body and the pink flower began to tremble slightly. It was as if the god of fertility free was telling her, I'm here. Since she was growing a great tree, she had the opportunity to see the growth of vegetation of the blooming of flowers. However, this was the first time that she had seen a plant react to will. Amazing. Celestina had no choice but to be impressed. Point F U U. Miria stopped talking, breathed in and opened her eyes. How was it? Wasn't it amazing? Amma, amazing. Celestina nodded yes albeit with a slight hesitation to Miria, whose eyes were sparkling. Perhaps she only wanted to show off the power that she had? Backquote but, it's really amazing so there is no choice. Since the flower responded to her call, Celestina also wanted to try it out. Can you teach? that method to me as well. Yes. Since you're my friend you're special. Ah. However, it isn't that difficult. Miria smiled and told her that there was no need to be nervous. Backquote is there any way to contact the shrine? It would be big if she were to gain some information. There was a slight hold back, but Celestina was glad that she accepted her invitation. What kind of method will she teach her? Celestina looked at Miria. The gods bless us, because they love us. That's why you should try and talk to the deity that blessed you. Miria stood in a prayer pose, and asked Celestina to try it out. Backquote that, Hisu had already taught me that. I've tried it out before Celestina had assumed that the method to use the power of blessings was a more closely kept secret and that many people weren't aware of it. Celestina was a little troubled, but she decided to step up 
and ask me Rhea about it. Is there no other way to use the power of blessings other than by talking to the deity that blessed you? Some people are able to use magic aren't they? Can something like that be done? Celestina inclined her head. No, you can't freely manipulate it. Or more like I would also like to know how to do it. If I can use this power more freely then I can be of help to Lord Soratek. Miria said. The only thing that Miria knew how to do now was to pray. Backquote perhaps if I can learn the method to use my power then I can master the power to change my destiny as expected. It wouldn't be that easy. Backquote but. But she really thought that being able to master the way to use her power would be great. The power to change one's destiny is a big thing, so it's probably not a power that humans can easily have. While Celestina was thinking about various things Miria urgently told her to try it out with her. That's right. Celestina gave a sociable smile, brought her hand together, and closed her eyes. Praying that her words should reach the goddess that gave her blessings. It didn't go too well. Maybe my prayer wasn't enough. It would be great if I can receive a response like you someday Lady Miria Celestina got up from her seat and looked at Miria. Thank you for inviting me today. It was nice to meet you after such a long time. I'm also glad that I got to speak to you today Lady Celestina. Let's meet again. Yes. Celestina smiled at Miria's words and began to walk towards the door. The tea meeting was over so she was planning to return back home now. It was regrettable that Celestina didn't receive any information that was more useful to her. Hisu went ahead to open the door but someone opened the door from outside first. It was Lucaria who came in. Lucaria noticed Celestina's presence and smiled at her warmly. Back quote you are. Celestina couldn't help but scream inside her mind. Lucaria had requested to become her fiancé, even though she was already engaged to Soratek. Noticing that Celestina had stopped walking, Miria curiously looked over to see why. A, hey, it's the chief of the Great Shrine isn't it? Back quote amazing, Miria muttered softly. He isn't someone that you can easily meet. Lord Lucaria possesses the greatest power of blessings of and amongst all the chiefs before. He had come over here a few days ago, but I could only see from afar. Miria said that she hadn't had the opportunity to speak to him at all. I never expected to be able to see him up close. Wow, what an amazing person. Miria was gushing over him. She seemed to look up to him, like he was some idol. However, Celestina couldn't look at Lucaria with those kinds of bright feelings. After all, she had rejected his request to become her fiancé through her father. What kind of a face should she show him? Her head was spinning as she wondered what to do. Lucaria spoke up first. Ah, Lady Celestina. To think that I would be able to meet you. I guess I must express my gratitude to God. It's been a long time Lord Lucaria. Lucaria asked Geralt. He has a strong power of blessings and reigns at the top of the shrines. He has a calm and doll like face. It seemed that his calm eyes, that were full of tenderness, wrapped everything in its blessings. He has shoulder length golden hair which was tied at the back. He wore a hat and his seal of blessings peeked out from the center of his forehead through his bangs which were parted in the center. Miria was surprised to see Celestina greeting Lucaria. Hey, are you acquaintances with Lord Lucaria? Previously he has been of great help to me. Amazing. Miria took a step forward and greeted Lucaria like a shrine maiden would. It's our first time meeting. I'm Miria Sultimal, a shrine maiden that is blessed by the god of fertility free. Yes, I've heard about it. That a young lady who is blessed by the god of fertility has come to learn etiquette at the shrine. 
Are you facing any inconveniences at the shrine? So Lucaria had heard about Miria as well.